So the game package is something that you will find already there, already in existence, in any of the starter templates that are set up to be games, such as the Team Deathmatch starter template or the Capture the Flag starter template. The game package holds onto all of the game logic, so it runs the sort of the game things that are going on behind the scenes, like team-based stuff and scores and lobbies and all of that kind of thing. And we can, um, we can integrate it in a game that doesn't currently have it. And the reason we're going to do that is because it gives us a bit of a deeper understanding about what's going on in that game package and what we might want to customize or change or adapt for our game in the future so that we can play a completely different game than any game that's ever been made before. Now, if you um, are using basic mode and you're not interested in using advanced mode, this tutorial might still be useful for you because you might get a bit of an understanding about what's going on behind the scenes. If you're using advanced mode, you can follow along as we go, go through this, but it's not essential because all of this stuff is already included in the starter template. I'm just talking you through what's going on behind the scenes. Now that we've said that, should we get cracking? We're going to look at this game here, which is... Uh, just an arena game and you can run around and shoot at the moment, but there's no game logic. I started with the basic, um, the blank template, uh, and so it doesn't have any game logic in it. To get hold of that game package, I'm going to go over to the community, search for game, and I'm going to make sure my creator packages is ticked so that I get only the creator packages. And the one I'm looking for is this game, a creator package. I'm going to install that. And notice that what else has come up is the target practice and the capture the flag. So this um, this game here is the most basic version, but you can actually use these other um, packages. They've already got this stuff in built if you're heading more towards those kinds of things. Um, I'm going to start with the really basic one, but yeah, you can also use those ones. Now, um, let's look at what's come down in that game package. So if I click on the assets here in the packages, a whole load of scripts, and it can look a little bit daunting. But don't worry, it's just a step-by-step -step process to including these in the game. First, let's go to the user. In here, I just need to click on Entity, Create Child, Script Folder, and find the User Game Script Folder. Now that I've added that, I can see that this has come with a Game User Script, and this is tied into a load of events that are telling the subfolders here telling them to do things. And they're essentially showing and hiding different parts of the UI for the user, depending on the game flow. This gives us a bit of a clue as to the order of the game flow. So here we've got lobby start and lobby end, which is going to be the first thing the players are in. And then round start, round end, which is the following screen. And this is where the real core gameplay happens. And then results start and results end, that's going to show and hide the results screen after each round. Now that I've integrated that with the user, I can stop editing that template. I can go to the template section in the library, find the game template and add that to my game world. Doesn't matter where, can be anywhere. Uh, and here, this has come in with um, the, the game template. It's essentially a locator with a game script attached and that's all it is. Uh, and the game script has got all of the different settings that we might want to use to edit and tweak and change our game. Now that we've got those two in there, I should find that the game kind of works. Uh, so the game starts, we've got a lobby screen. Uh, it's showing me bits of the user interface to show the, uh, to indicate to the player where they are and what they're currently doing. But there's some core game logic that's also still missing a little bit from here if we want this to be a team deathmatch game. So I'm just gonna exit that and I'm gonna add the core, that, that extra game logic that we need. So the first thing is gonna be respawning the player. So they spawn automatically at the start and then they stay alive until they die at the moment. What if I want them to respawn or what if I don't want them to spawn at the start? We're going to need the auto respawn package. So in the community, I'm going to look for auto respawn. I'm going to install that, close that, and then head over to the user. And in the user game script folder, I'm going to add another script folder. I'm going to do create child script folder, user spawn. So the user spawn or spawn user script has now been added to the player. And whereas this user game script or game user script had all of this stuff already hooked up, I need to do a little bit of that here. So I need to, the spawn point I don't need to set, but the player template I do want to set to the player. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could add a spawn sound and I could decide whether respawning is active and how long it takes to respawn. And I can also decide whether to spawn on login or not. So at the moment, 
it's not spawning on login, which means in the lobby, I'm actually in control of my drone and I haven't actually got a user spawned yet. So I'm spectator in spectate mode here. And notice that even in the game, I'm not actually spawning either. So let's remedy that. In the user, I can select, in user spawn, I can select spawn on login. And that will mean that now the user automatically is spawned in the lobby. Uh, one other thing I need to do is um, hook up these events so that the events work with the spawn logic too. So odd round start, I need to click the plus here and I need to go and find the user spawn script folder and I need to spawn the player there. So run the spawn event. This is because when the round starts, I want to make sure that the player is spawned. And it also means that when the lob in the lobby screen, when everyone's sorted into their teams, uh, the spawn script will run and it will spawn the players on the appropriate spawn locator. We haven't quite finished this part, so the spawn locators haven't been set up yet, but it, it currently works. So we're spawning the user at the start of the round. And now what we can do is um, create those two spawn points. So we need one for team one and one for team two. So you see, I've got this default start location here. And at the moment, every player in the game <laughs> will be spawned on this point at the end at the start of a round, which will make for some very close quarters combat. Um, but we need to remedy that. So um, for this locator, I need to create one for team one and one for team two. Uh, the way we do that is we're going to add the, the team script here. So that was entity add script team script. Scroll down and I'm going to select team one for this um, this locator. And then I can duplicate the locator, move it to the other side of the screen or the other side of the arena, make that for team two. So now the auto respawn will automatically find out what team the player is in and it will find the locator that's most appropriate to that player's team. So if the, team's in, if the player's in team one, it'll find the team one locator. And you can have multiple locators even for um, the same team. So I could have three locators for team one and it would just pick one of those um, three locators. There's some really clever algorithm stuff that's, go, that's going on in the auto respawn um, script so that it determines the right, um, the right locator to spawn at. So if you're interested in that, you can go and have a look at that. <laughs> so um, now that that's sort of set up, um, we've got two start locations. This, I, I might even label these. So this is team one start, and this is team two start. Like that, keep things nice and neat-ish. <laughs> okay, so we've got some locators and we've got the respawn logic work. One more thing to do. Um, with the respawn logic. Um, actually, no, we'll do that. We'll do that later on. Okay, so we've got the user and we've added it our, our spawn logic. Now, we're still missing some things that you will see in the starter templates. Um, so for example, there is a notifications panel over here where it tells you when things are updating in the game. And in the game, while the game is running, you should also have the scoreboard over here and that's not appeared yet. That's okay, we can do that now. Um, they are some additional packages that we can set up uh, and they will hook up quite easily. So let's go to the community. Let's look for the scoreboard package. Again, create a package. And also while we're here, let's get the notifications package. The notifications? No, the notifications package and install that. So we've got those two. And now let's go to our user. And because these are on the user interface, they're on the heads up display, um, it's, it's going to be kind of obvious that we need to add those to the user, um, the user game folder or the user anywhere, really. But anything that's kind of showing just for individual users um, and tailored towards that user will generally need to be on the user template um, when it's regarding the, their screen space. So um, here we've got the user game, so we need to add these. So let's create child script folder. We need to add the user scoreboard and let's do that again. User game, uh, create child script folder and let's add the notifications. So now we have this notifications area on the right and we have the scoreboard here on the left. Um, 
and we need to hook these up to the events in the game as well. So let's click on the user game. So here where we've got the round start, that's where I want to show the scoreboard. So I'm going to click on the user scoreboard and I'm going to do show scoreboard there. Um, and we also think that's everything we need. That bit. Oh, we could hide it. We could hide it at the end of the round. Um, so we're showing the scoreboard at the start and we can hide it at the end. So uh, use the scoreboard. That's that's kind of up to you. You can you can choose whether you want to show and hide it or not have it or whatever you like. Um, but now that I've added that user scoreboard, um, if we just wait for the lobby to complete, there we go. You can see that the scoreboard is there on the um, on the left hand side of the screen. Over here. Cool. So scoreboard check. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but here on the right hand side, there is the notifications which has started up. So it says welcome to the game with my name and it says what my score is currently. So that's really cool as well. That's just automatically working with the game settings. Um, game setting, the game script is sending notifications out and they're being displayed by that little notifications panel. So that's essentially everything's kind of hooked up together. Um, let's have a quick look through what's going on in the game. So we've got this game script and now some of these um, properties will start to make sense now that we've hooked things up. So you can see the welcome message says, welcome to the game with the name there. And that's exactly what appeared on the notification panel on the right hand side, right? So it said, welcome to the game, Super Goose. And Super Goose is the, my, um, my name in Stadia. So that's what appeared in this little name slot. So the name part got replaced with Super Goose. And similarly, it says player joined and player left. So you can tweak and customize this text and that will display in the notifications panel on the right hand side um, when a player joins or a player leaves the game. Always do lobby. This is a checkbox where you can decide whether you want to have a lobby in between game rounds or whether you just want to go uh, from, a round, from a game round to results screen and then keep flip flopping back between those two. Um, so you can choose, yeah, essentially you will, you will always have a lobby at the start, but do you want the lobby in between game rounds as well? The max lobby time is how long the lobby lasts at the beginning. So uh, the longer this time, the more players might arrive and uh, greet each other in the lobby before the round starts, which is a really cool thing to do. But you also don't want to make it so long that players are just sitting around in a lobby for ages, unless it's like a lobby game and you could put some music on and make it into a really nice lobby area. Um, so, so essentially, um, you can tweak how long you want to, uh, the players to be in the lobby. And you can even um, make it so that the game requires a minimum number of players before it will start playing. So at the moment, my game only requires one player, which means I can run around my game world. But if you want to wait for two teams of four, then you would set that to eight players, because then you've got eight players in your game, and you've got one team of four and another team of four adding together to make the eight players. Um, so you, if you're playing a team game, you probably want a minimum number of two people in the game before it actually starts. And then it would just be a head-to-head, -head, 1v1. Um, max playtime is how long each round should last. So at the moment, it's one minute long. But let's set that to 0 minutes long and 10 seconds. So let's make the lobby five seconds and the game 10 seconds. And you'll see that now, when I join the game, the lobby only lasts five seconds. And the game itself lasts only 10 seconds. It's a real quick fire, quick fire round there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm showing you that at the end of the game, the results screen appears, which is sort of what we expected to happen. But it's nice to know <laughs> that it is working. And again, we've got a 10 second wait and then back to the round where I'm respawned. So that is the uh, max playtime. I set that to 10 seconds. The kill score is how many points you will get when you kill someone. You can decide whether it has teams or not. If you uncheck that, then you lose all of the team's settings, which is good because it's avoiding all that um, extra stuff that you don't need to worry about. If you do have teams, then check that checkbox and then you can decide how many points your teammates um, or your team will get when you kill someone. So this is individual score. This is team score when you kill someone. Uh, you can change the team names. You can decide whether to auto respawn or not here. And that will tell the auto respawn script whether to auto respawn or not. The always respawn for play will determine whether 
at the start of the round whether you should respawn or not. If I uncheck that, if I uncheck that and then wait for this lobby to finish, notice that I didn't respawn even though I'd hooked up that event to respawn. Um, so you can actually tweak that in the game settings here. So you don't need to be in advanced mode to tweak whether someone respawns um, at the start of a round or not. You just check or uncheck this. Allow mid-game join is self-explanatory. It allows players to join in the middle of a game if they want to. The max results time is how long to show that end result screen that we saw. And the results camera is super cool. <laughs> and I want to talk about that. So um, what you can do in your game is if we go to the primitives, um, you can select a camera and you can place it in your game anywhere. Uh, and then with that camera selected, so I'm going to call this results camera. With that camera selected, you can, um, oh, there's two of them now. Um, you can position the drone where you want a nice view of your arena. Maybe a nice view of my arena is over here. Maybe it's a low shot like this. That looks cool. And then with this results camera selected, I can scroll down here and I can select the move to drone button. And now this camera is looking exactly what I'm looking at there, including all of the rotational um, data as well. So if I move away, you can see that the camera is there. Now that I've set up that results camera, if I go to the game, I can click and drag this results camera or select it from this drop down box here. And now at the end of the round, it will show the results camera. It will show what the results camera is seeing. Or will it? If we test that out, let's test that out and make sure it works. So that was a five second lobby, 10 second round time. Remember you can um, tweak these settings. So I, could, I would just, um, after this has all been set up, I would change them all back to however long you really want it. Notice that we didn't display the results camera. Okay. The reason for that is that our player was still there. So while a user has a character in the game world, the camera will follow that character. It will try and be on that character. For our, for our game to um, move us to the results camera, we actually need to go into our user and we need to despawn them on results start. So going down to this results start uh, event in the user game script folder here, we're going to select our respawn script folder and the event we want is despawn. And that will essentially destroy the player without like killing them and getting all the points for the other team or anything like that. Um, and then by despawning them, we are able to then see the results camera at the end of the round because the player no longer exists and is no longer in charge of the camera. So let's just test that that works. Waiting the 10 seconds. It despawned my character and now I'm seeing from that results camera instead of from the character. So that's the majority of the game settings that you're going to want to play around with. There's also these events here. So each of these are events that can happen in the game. Lobby start, lobby end, round start, round end, result start, results end, as well as user died. Um, and you can uh, hook up your own game logic to these things. Or you might want to do things like reset all of the voxels um, when the game restarts. Uh, and to do that, you can just add the voxel health package and um, and then run that um, re reset vo voxels on the on round start here. Uh, if you're interested in that stuff, then there is a tutorial on voxel health things. And you can go and have a look at the voxel health tutorial about how to integrate all of that stuff. Uh, and you can combine it with this um, on round start event here. Um, so that's the, the kind of crux of it. If you want to customize the UI in a bit more depth for your game, so when I say UI, I mean the user interface, the stuff that appears on the screen, it's superimposed on the screen. Um, then you can go to the user and in the user game is where you will find all of the that kind of stuff as well. So, uh, and in here you can go and you can tweak these widgets and play around with them and change the text that appears and all of that sort of gubbins as well. Um, and that's it. That's essentially what we're going to be looking at for the game settings today. Uh, I will be creating a compact, like I said, a companion tutorial where we change the objective of the game so that it's not just kill the other team um, and see uh, how complicated that is or how easy that is. Uh, and then um, 
Uh, I'll also be making a quick version of this guide, so we'll just be looking at the game settings and what you can do to tweak and change those as and when you want to. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you've got any feedback about this tutorial, about other tutorials um, that I've created. Uh, join the Discord if you get stuck or if you want some more information. Um, there's lots of lovely people in there. Everyone's helping each other out. And I really look forward to seeing what games you make and I look forward to seeing you in the game. Thank <laughs> you.